Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I know, everyone good afternoon, because that's what Mina konnichiwa means is very rare for me. Usually it's konbanwa, good evening. So, yeah, I don't know, things are weird and upside down today, but you can see in the window in the background, wrong way. Window in the background, there, yeah, finger. There's some light coming out from there, so yeah, it's kind of weird. Coming at you with Esther chapter 8. Just something that, it was an interesting little thing that came to me. It's kind of a duh when you think about it, but I had never really thought too deeply about it. Um, I'm going to start at verse 15, so you know, Haman's hung and everything's alright. Well, quote unquote, well, and everything's not alright. Apparently, the king, whenever he makes a decree, it cannot be revoked. You see in um, verse 8, you yourselves, this is King Ahasuerus speaking, you yourselves, speaking to Esther and Mordecai, Write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring. For whatever is written in the king's name and seal with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke it. And that did include, for that particular government, the king himself. If he said something, it stood, even if he wanted to take it back. So, they, sign a, they basically sign into a law a new decree that the Jews are allowed to defend themselves. That's in verse 11. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who are in every city to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. So, the first decree stood, but now there's another decree out saying, oh, by the way, the Jews are going to be defending themselves. And an interesting little thing happens. Um... Obviously, all the Jews are incredibly happy. You go down to verse 17, and in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Obviously, it's like, oh, hey, our defending ourselves is legitimized now. And now that everyone, you know, at this point, now that we know and everyone knows that we can defend ourselves, people are going to think twice before actually trying to just kill us and take ourselves. It's not going to be the whole village against some small subset. No, um... The king has said, by the way, they're going to defend themselves. So if you go at them, you're risking your life at this point. It's not, you know, there's not going to be some armed militia helping you. It's not necessarily going to be the whole village. It's going to be whoever feels uh, gutsy enough to go and try to kill them. And that would dissuade many people, of course, from trying to kill them. But the interesting thing that happened at the end of verse 17, then many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of the Jews fell upon them. So you have people actually converting over to Judaism and worshiping the God of the Old Testament, or at least pretending to do so, just because, oh, whoa, the kings all of a sudden had a change of heart. And now that the Jews aren't being destroyed, now they're allowed to defend themselves. So it's not just going to be some one-sided slaughter. Maybe advantageous if we became Jews. It's just so funny because I, I read that and I thought to myself, the Bible is such a pro-Jewish book. I mean, that is, it, it's borderline propaganda. Now, a lot, a lot of non-Christians would say the whole Bible is propaganda. Um, I would, of course, take issue with that. I see it as historical and spiritual theological truth. But that aside, that's another message for another time. It's so funny because it's just like, Especially the book of Esther is so pro-Jewish, and being a Jew is such a big deal. Um, I think I read back a few uh, a few days ago, or possibly just uh, two days ago, in verse 13 of chapter 6, When Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent... You will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. So the book of Esther is incredibly pro-Jewish, and it's like, that sounds like absolute, just pure propaganda, pure patriotism, pure nationalism. And that, talk about, you know, incredibly and completely biased. Well, yeah, the Jews were God's chosen people. If the God of the Old Testament is real, and we know that Jews are real, they still exist to this day. And the Bible's obviously real. I'm holding a copy of it in my hand. You don't you may not believe it's a true assessment of history. I do. But it, it can't be disputed that the Bible and the Jewish people exist. If the Bible's right, if God did choose Abraham and his descendants, then yeah, there's a very good reason the Old Testament was pro-Jewish. Not just because it was written by them, but they were God's chosen people. And Paul goes on to say in the book of Romans, I'll let y'all Google this part here. He goes on to say that there is... You know, what benefit is there to being born a Jew? Well, 
There's a lot of benefit, actually. I'm a Gentile. I'm not of Jewish descent, although I have been grafted into the vine of worshiping the one true God through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's another Romans reference, grafting into the vine. You can Google that as well if you so desire. But yeah, I was just like, this, is, this book is incredibly pro-Jewish. Well, yeah, because they were God's chosen people. There was a reason to be pro-Jewish, especially in the Old Testament, when God's message and law was specifically to that people. Um, I'm very, very thankful that we still have the Old Testament. I'm very thankful we can learn from the examples from it. And I'm very much more thankful that nowadays we can all have a chance to know God through God who came into this world as a Jew, the man Jesus Christ. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.